Hello, everybody. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, Carnivore, Carnivish. I'm a 69-year-old woman that does a mostly carnivore way of eating. And um, I got here by way of <laughs> Weight Watchers like six years ago. And uh, then I went to low carb, high fat. Then I went to keto, um, keto under 20, total carbs, never net. And then I went on to what I'm doing now, which is a mostly carnivore way of eating. And it's been an interesting run. I love what I'm doing. I, I think one of the gifts of being mostly carnivore is that there's still some tweaking and, um, you know, it's not 100%. I don't picture me doing just meat, salt, and beef. I don't. I love my coffee. But I've done a lot of tweaking of my coffees, how I have them, my fats, the types of meat, graduating from certain things. I gave up gum while doing all of my programs. I've incorporated salts. I've probably got seven different salts on my table. I know a lot of you ask what it is that I use for salt. I just got a cherry wood smoked sea salt, mm -hmm. Celtic salt crystals I use for my tongue in the morning before I begin my warmed lemon water with Himalayan salt in it and new salt in it, quarter of a teaspoon of that. I also use pink Himalayan salt. I also use Redmond's real salt. I also use, I think it's Sir Le Grand, um, white salt flakes from uh, France on my meat. And um, although that smoked cherry wood uh, sea salt that I just got yesterday, the guy delivers my salt, right? And it's like pink Himalayan, Celtic, and the smoked sea salt. And it weighs like, I don't know, about 13 pounds, you know, and I, and, um, and the total was like $40 from Amazon. And it's like, who would even think that I would get like 13 pounds of salt delivered um, from Amazon and that uh, it would be almost $40. But the pink Himalayan was, um, it was 10, 10 individual bags, a um, dollar a bag, I think maybe two dollars it was a pound and then the pink himmel uh the celtic was two one pound bags of the crystals and then the um smoked cherry uh sea salt was i think a four or five ounce pouch it was like eight or nine dollars but it's like hey i'm living large with my my mostly kind of what diet you know it's nothing like some salt so um yeah, and my, my butter is Kerrygold for the most part. I've had some Finlandia when it's been, when I've had a $2 off coupon at BJ's, but mostly it's Kerrygold butter, which is in one of my coffees. For um, the other fats that I use, I use, I use organic, unrefined uh, Dr. Bronner's coconut oil with the kernel, and I know it's a plant. <gasps> I know. And um, I have that. And then I have um, ghee. I have vanilla bean fourth and heart ghee, and I have um, regular uh, fourth and heart ghee. I have um, uh, vital eggs. Um, they've come out with the ghee, so I have vital ghee from them. And I have Omega Superpower Creamer. I have uh, pumpkin spice that I'll use. Uh, probably just about seven or eight grams. The rest will be coconut oil, just just for that little je ne sais pas of flavor. And um, because I've done reviews for them on all of their different flavors, they're sending me peppermint mocha. And I will be doing a review of that. Of course, by the time you see this video, I think the review on that will already be out. So I look forward to that. They're nice people there at that company. And... Um, I've done a few reviews over the years, and um, this one is one that I believe in, and I think they work really hard, and you can get it through Amazon. So those are the salts and the fats that I use slash have. I also avocado oil and evu, which I don't use the evu too much, but the avocado oil 
I put that in the Lodge stainless steel um, cast iron pans that I cook Brussels sprouts and cauliflower in on top of the big green egg. Um, I do have Brussels sprouts on Sunday just because um, Greg works so hard on that egg and I just love the Brussels sprouts and the amount that I have, you know, it's not going to fill a thimble, a little bit more than a thimble, but it's just a nice treat to have on a Sunday with <clears throat> the steak of the the steak of the week chosen for Sunday. I did my meat run <clears throat> at the butcher yesterday and I got there two hours later than usual because I had a dentist appointment and they said, well, where were you? We missed you. And I love that. <gasps> They're missing me. And the guy said in his Portuguese accent, I figured you were Ubering. And um, actually it's my overnight and I scheduled my dental appointments um, right after that. So I could just go from here to there. And um, so I got for the week, four of the most unbelievable T-bones. They're really porterhouse. The, the tenderloin on them is about this big, like the size of a pork chop. And they're nice and thick. I asked for extra thick, two ribeyes, two and a half pounds of the top sirloin ground for the burgers, the top of the pizza, and then little burgers, not slider size, but smaller than the 10 ounce one that I have on Friday to have like, you know, with partially leftover short ribs, I got boneless short ribs, two and a half pounds of them. They've already been cooked overnight in the crock pot. So yeah, short ribs, ground beef, two ribeyes, and four of the most delicious looking tenderloin uh, porterhouse slash T-bone steaks. So those will be my meats for the week. So I can fill it in with the little baby burgers along the way when there's like leftovers because I think the steaks are probably about a pound and a half a piece. So I, I don't think I'll have the whole steak, but give it the old Girl Scout try, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't sweat a lot of things. I, as you can tell, oh, and my coffee is very special to me too. I usually have a Vita cup Keurig cup um, on Mondays and, and Saturdays. I have um, a double the caffeine one that they have with Nootrops in it, N-O-O-T-R-O-O-P-S. <clears throat> Don't know what that means, but I have those two for my start because my um, Mondays and Saturdays are kind of busy. And um, so I like the fuel for that. I'm finding that having my three cups of coffee um, as bridges with the fat makes a big difference for this fat loving, fat adapted gal. I'm 69. Um, the last time I weighed what I weigh now was the third grade. And then I, <laughs> I guess you could gently say blossomed, but what I really did was blew up. And that was probably 1958 to 1960 when I put on, you know, I just became that chunky monkey. And uh, I'm sure that's when the food manufacturers began tampering with our food and started that well, let's just add a little bit of sugar to this and see how it works. And it worked just fine. Thank you very much. Let's just add some seed oils to this and see how it works. Oh, yeah, that worked fine, too. I was a brownie batter, Toll House cookie batter, uh, can of frosting um, type of binge eater. Not binge eater. That was like a meal. A meal in a can, right? Some people, some people would have chunky soup. Not me. I'd have a can of frosting. And... So I became wicked, wicked sugar addicted, fat addicted, wrong fats addicted, and carb addicted. I had a Boston Whaler, a little speedboat, and there was a McDonald's um, a couple of towns away on the water. And I would take my boat, my little fat self in my boat, over to get French fries and a tab. I never liked Fresca, but I liked tab. And I would have my um, double order of French fries, my tab, and my speed pill prescribed from my doctor because it's like, I don't know why you're gaining all this weight. Maybe this will be an appetite suppressant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I guess that was pre-caffeine in my coffee, right? And so, you know, I began as a fat little girl. Yesterday, the dentist, she said to me, um, you know, I told her I haven't had sugar for six years. And she's like, how could you not have sugar for six years? And it's like, I just gave it up. And she said, yeah, you sure have a lot of dental work. 
well, you know, she took the X or the x-ray technician took the x-rays and I had no cavities, which is a good thing from not having sugar for six years, right? And somebody was asking me about gum and I do have a gum video. I used to be totally addicted to gum. That was my BBC, Better Bad Choice. I use the term BBC a lot. It's when you have, um, it's when you have a Diet Coke instead of a sugar Coke. To some, that would be a BBC. It's when you have um, a little um, a little spoonful of veg instead of having, you know, something that would be much more dangerous if you were mostly carnivore. That's a better bad choice than having um, bread, rice, sugar, any of those things. And so BBCs are better bad choices at the moment. We know that your decision is for a certain food plan, like my decision is mostly carnivore, but then you're given a choice. And sometimes, um, as I'm hearing from a lot of people through this holiday season, is that they they follow their decision of their food plan, be it keto, carnivore, carnivish. They follow that just fine. They tweak when needed, but sometimes they're presented choices. And, you know, there's a lot of socializing through this season. And so you'll find yourself at somebody else's table, somebody else's house, out at a restaurant, at a buffet for some sort of seasonal you know, celebration, and the choices are like not a lot of the meat that you would have if you were home. And um, and so you have like a tablespoon of this veg or a tablespoon of that veg just to get through it. And, you know, that's a, it's just a nice societal uh, courtesy, you know, and it just stops the questions too. You know, if you're having a, a tablespoon of roasted um, Brussels sprouts, and you're usually no veg whatsoever, is it a big deal? No. You have a couple of asparagus wrapped in the bacon. Um, is that a big deal? No. Does it make you look, quote unquote, normal to the people that might, you know, let you know their comments, unsolicited, of course. And um, no, it's not a big deal. It's just a better bad choice. If it keeps you from getting, you know, hungry or feeling awkward or socially inept or the fear of missing out, it's a whole lot better than hitting that dessert thing over there, that whole table over there after the meal, because you want to steer clear of that. There is no better bad choice with a dessert. And um, yeah, we kind of know that, right? And so we just mosey along, do what we do. You know, my, my diet is very, very simple. I do enjoy my coffee with my fat in it. I use Kitu, K-I-T-U, unsweetened, non-dairy creamer. So actually, I'm pretty much dairy-free six days of the week. And on that sixth day, that Saturday, I have my Mitsa pizza, which is pretty much just cheese and meats at this point. And yes, you can make a crust out of cheese and it holds together. You don't need two cups of almond flour. I use perhaps a tablespoon and a, and a half, so four teaspoons of um, almond flour in it with some fennel seed. I know it comes from a plant. And um, I just enjoy my Mitsa pizza and it just keeps me, it, I don't know what it is, but it's been with me, my staple through all of it from Weight Watchers on, a pizza on Saturday, just keeps me sane, stable, in the game, abstinent in my food program, just like, you know, I like to hear that you're abstinent in your food program. Does it work for me? Yes, it works for me. Am I happy? Yes. Content? You bet. Satiated? Always. And so I feel as an older woman, I'm 69, that having the extra fats like I do in my coffee and that pat of butter on my beef, um, it just makes me feel better. It fuels me. And um, I feel I feel good for it. My brain feels good for it. I feel that um, the MCT that I have, oh, and I have brain octane as well from Bulletproof um, Dave Asprey. And um, sometimes I'll use eight grams of that and then the rest will be coconut oil in my coffee as well. It's very powerful. Uh, one tablespoon um, might make me zingy, but it's so expensive that I cut it with the coconut oil. And so that's just the simplicity of doing my food plan. There are tweaks that happen all the time. 
I didn't have many eggs at all this past week. I felt okay with that. Um, I don't know why. It just was something that I felt. And so I went with it. Um, I've been able to, I don't necessarily track anymore. Um, I don't know. I weigh the ingredients in my coffee. I weigh my butters, my fats, and my um, keto, but I don't usually weigh my meat anymore. Um, I just kind of am able to eat intuitively. Did it take a while to get here? Yeah, like six years. And so I can kind of tell what's going to make me feel that right, that right full, that Goldilocks full, not overstuffed, not bloated, not I could go take a three hour nap, just that um, whatever signal it sends up, the leptins or whatever signal it is, is that, yes, I've had enough. I can stop. I can wrap the rest of that beef or um, pizza, whatever it is, and have it at a later time. And it's just working for me. It's so gradual. It's so gradual. Being a, a card-carrying, overeater, carb addict, sugar addict, too much of too much addict all my life, as well as a recovering alcoholic, you know, it took a long time to get to this safety place of intuitive eating, of having the salt on my beef and saying, this is safe, of going from having three eggs to two eggs to one egg to no eggs a couple of days last week. And it just all works. And I wish the same for you in your journey, but just be careful with your BBCs, your Better Bad Choices, and the offerings that you're given. There's no sugar that you need. There's no seed oil item that you need. There is no fruit that you need. And the artificial sweeteners and the diet sodas, you don't need those either. What you do need is nutritionally dense foods. What do I consider that? Beef. <laughs> That's it. I'm easy. Although I do like fatty country pork ribs at times, but I'm basically a beef gal. That's how it goes. I will see you the next time here at Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Accountability coaching is still available. You can still you can still keep your ship upright <laughs> through the season. And um, my email address for more information about that is below. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here, my pickles, snowflakes, turtles, no matter what club members. And Goldilocks, my favorite. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.